Good morning, it's Easter Monday and I'm, I've am i just decided to work today to catch up with a load of things, so happy Easter, hope you all had a, a decent extended weekend, um, four day weekend, so uh, yeah, um, I spent a bit of time over the weekend on these and um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit to sort of uh, mention with these, so um, when I took all the original measurements, um, we found quite a, a peak in both tweeters. And when I looked at the crossovers, I found that one of the resistors on the notch filter for the tweeter was not connected. And if you remember on the original measurements, we had one tweeter that was reasonably what you'd expect, but had the peak right up at 10 or 12, uh, 12 kilohertz um, and the other one had the same peak but a big dip at around six and a half kilohertz so I soldered that back in didn't think much more of it um, tested all the drivers individually and recapped the crossovers as they were put them back together measured them both and they both had a still had the tweeters rising response at 12k around that area. And now they both have a huge dip at six and a half kilohertz. But they're both doing exactly the same thing. And I thought that notch filter must be incorrect. It must be um, tuned incorrectly. So I took one of the speakers apart took the crossover out, soldered on some lead wires out the port, and then started to muck around with the crossover. I've shot handheld video of me doing all this, so I'll, I'll put that in afterwards so you can see what I needed to do. So I thought, that's obviously how they were originally. I can't let them go out like that. I mean, I found the reason why there was a difference in sound um, between the two, because one had the notch filter connected and one didn't. Um, but even so, they're rubbish. I, you know, you got this huge hole and this huge peak. Um, I can't leave them like that. So um, yeah, so I put the crossover on the table, set up the measurement microphone, and started to shoot measurements. And I clipped out that notch filter, and lo and behold, the six and a half kilohertz dip flattened out. So straight away, I was like, okay, right, that notch filter is just in the wrong place. Um, and interestingly, I had a comment from a guy who used to sell Celef speakers, and he mentioned that they always had to listen to them before they went out, um, because there was often crossover issues. I mean, I've had quite a few Celef speakers and Proax where components haven't been soldered on the board properly. I had it in my PE ones, which are my own speakers, a few other Celefs that have been in and out, where just things were not soldered or values were incorrect between the two. So I've got a feeling that the notch circuit that was fitted to these, the component values were wrong, possibly for a different model. I don't know. Anyway, so um, I started to retune that circuit and... Um, I'll go through the changes I made to the notch filter. So originally we had a, I think it was a 2.4 ohm resistor into a 2.2 microfarad capacitor into a 0.24 millihenry inductor across the positive and negative of the tweeter in effect to tune a high and low point to pull that response down. But it was too low. So I've changed that to a 0.82 microfarad and a 0.15 millihenry, and that's really, really helped. So yeah, the notch filter is where it, it should be. Um, I also attenuated this circuit slightly um, and also changed the value of the, this uses a third order high pass. I changed the value of the um, second capacitor from five to, um, I think it was 6.8, but I'll go through that in the next bit. Um, and that's really helped because these have a dip in the response, 
at about two and a half kilohertz and straight away you look at that and you think oh the tweet is connected out of phase um, but if you reverse that the hole gets bigger so that's kind of intentional believe it or not um, and i've seen that again in proax speakers um, and in other celefs it is the area where there can be some brightness and hardness so i got a feeling it's dialed out on purpose um, it's not that the drivers won't meet each other it's just that they've rolled off the woofer a little earlier just to get that dip in there and the same with the tweeter i'm pretty sure there's no issues with the tweeter i've near near field take these out and near field tested them these use ferrofluid i think and there's there's no issue i've also got a few of these i've measured them side by side exactly the same so no um no tweeter issue so here's the measurement of them originally recapped but the original crossovers with and without the notch filter And you can see in that where that big six and a half K dip is. And we've got a 2.5 kilohertz dip as well. And with the new notch filter, um, a few value changes on the tweeter circuit, this is where they are now. I'm quite happy with that. We're in a plus minus two, two and a half dB window. Um, I've had a quick listen to them and they're they're nice they're not offensive or anything like that they're just really nice to listen to really good um so yeah i'll put in the video clips now i took of me kind of reworking these um so it was more work than just recapping them and correcting a few things i couldn't let them go out the way they were um they've always been like that so quite how you listen to them i i, I don't know um, I did wonder whether someone had stuck a different tweeter in these, but I'm pretty sure this is the tweeter, the CS tweeter they were originally fitted with. Certainly the um, B200 Kef woofers are original. Um, but yeah, they're a nice speaker. So anyway, I'm rambling on. Got a lot to do. A cup of bovril to keep me going. Um, here's those bits and I'll stick any photos and things uh, in at the end. All right. Have a good Easter Monday, if this video goes out on Easter Monday. <laughs> right, so I'm using those crocodile clips there to clip in a different notch filter, so different values of capacitor and inductor and a resistor if needed. But um, yeah, I've mucked around with a few values and we've gone from um, this red line, which is with the notch filter connected and it was causing a serious phase issue at six and a half kilohertz um, without it we have this measurement so we take this dip out but we have a massive rise in response still um, and with the components i've currently got clipped in i'm like that so what i'll probably do now is bring the overall tweeter level down and just see if i can do something here um, but yeah, tons better. Those values are just wrong. Um, I've tested the both tweeters on their own and um, it is crossover related. We haven't got a tweeter problem because um, I know these use ferrofluid. So uh, yeah. So yeah, that yeah. dip in the response, I think is intentional. I've seen that in other Celef speakers and also Proac. Um, that's the area of um, uh kind of hardness harshness um so the red line is with the tweeter polarity um reversed to what it was originally the blue line is um how it should be so it's not the fact that the tweeter is connected um reverse polarity or anything that's actually intentional so um yeah i'll see what happens with that when i go off axis because normally that often as you move off axis you change the time arrival of the drivers anyway so that phasing can change so um, I'll see what happens uh, if that is the case I'll probably leave that alone. Okay so now I've been playing with the second capacitor value on the tweeter circuit so it uses a third order circuit with this notch filter on it um, 4.7 and a 5 
Um, what I'm doing is adding capacitance to this, which will push the crossover point slightly lower, um, or allow the tweeter to play slightly lower, because what I'm trying to do is just <clears throat> lift out that dip a little bit. So, um, where are we? This line is the original, and the green line is with a, another, I think it's 2.2 .2 microfarad across it which is a lot better. We still have that dip there, but it's it's not as deep. Um, and actually having done some off axis measurements, it I'm sure it was there as a compromise because it's not much changes as you move off axis. So, um, and like I say, I've seen this on a few Proax speakers as well. So I think Mr. Tyler did this on, on purpose. <laughs> um, if we look at the um, SPL and phase so this is the new crossover point and you can see it's about um, probably 2.2 2.3 kilohertz and if we go to where it was before it just moves up a little bit more like 2.5 so just by changing um, that capacitor value um, we've just pushed that crossover point a little bit lower. That seems to be the ideal add-on value without compromising too much of the rest of the response. If I add in more capacitance, I sort of create a dip here. So uh, that's pretty good from 200 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Apart from this little bump here that just drops out as you move off um, horizontally, you know, you've got to say we are plus minus two and a half dB. Pretty good. This video all seems a bit wobbly cam, doesn't it? This is what happens when you um, you sort of want to crack on, really. Right, so this is the original crossover that we drew out in the last video. Um, someone thought that was a 4.7 ohm resistor. It's not, it's 47. Um, yeah, I agree. If that was a 4.7, we'd really just be grounding out the whole circuit. Anyway, so what we need to do is change this to um, a... 4.7 plus 2.2 .2. so that makes what uh, 6.9 that just allows that tweeter just to play a little bit lower to take out some of that scoop that we have around two and a half kilohertz um, I think it's there intentionally believe it or not um, this Resistor value here changes to a 3.3. .3. And this notch circuit, a notch circuit changes. So. We have a. One microfarad. Not a 2.2 .2 and. The inductor changes from 0.24 to 0. 1.5 millihenry and there's no resistor um, in there at all tweet is still connected out phase um, yeah there we go right so there's the further revised crossover um, I've also put uh, three 50 ohm 3 watt resistors in parallel to give us our 47 they're actually slightly less I've picked out the resistors to get 47 ohms um, these are 3 watt rated each so that gives us 9 watts compared to the old 5 watt rated jobbies that have overheated big time as you can see there so yeah we've got a new notch filter here jumps the old resistor out a uh, new resistor there just to slightly pull the tweet circuit down a little bit um, our additional cap there so yeah, ready to go back in. I've given the covers a good hoover and actually cleaned the cabinets. And quickly went over them with some oil. Because they were really dry. Obviously that was my decision and it's woken them up quite nicely. Right, there we go. All done.